Hey guys, welcome to Regarding Men, where we hold men in high regard. I'm Janice Fiamingo. I'm joined by Paul Elam and Tom Golden. And this is our third live stream. And uh, we wanted to have a way to connect with our audience. So um, if you have questions or comments, we're interested in hearing from you. And we're gonna talk about a couple subjects today that at first may not appear to be closely connected and perhaps are not closely connected, um, but we've lumped them together under the heading of what men will do for women and what women will do to men. We hope this becomes clear as we nuance it in our discussion. We're gonna start off by talking about a uh, reality TV show in the UK uh, I think it is in the UK. I haven't watched it. Paul has. So correct me if I'm wrong, Paul. It uh, is not in the UK. It is not in the UK. Okay, good. I'm glad <laughs> I asked you that. <laughs> well, it just shows how little I know about it. Okay, it's a reality TV show in the United States. <laughs> and uh, it's called Labor of Love. And it's all about a group of eligible guys <laughs> vying for the, um, well, I don't know, it's not the hand in marriage exactly, but vying for the opportunity to be the baby daddy, I guess is the correct term, of a 41-year-old woman. Her name is, uh, I wrote it down, Christy Katzman. She's been on reality TV shows before, apparently, sometime in the past. She was on some Bachelor show. And um, yeah, so she's now 41 years old as the uh, program begins and she's decided she wants to have a child. So the entire show is focused around these eligible men coming forward to say that they would like to help her have a child. So that's kind of an interesting topic uh, and I uh, look forward to hearing uh, all about it from Paul. Uh, and then our second, uh, topic, which is quite a bit different, but um, we think it connects, has to do with incel terrorism. This is now a designation that is being used by CSIS, that's the, um, oh, what does it stand for? The Canadian Security and Intelligence Services. And it means that, um, that the incel movement, as it is often called, erroneously, I think, uh, is, has been branded a form of ideological terrorism. So it means that a person who commits an act of violence can be charged under the Terrorism Act in Canada and uh, can get a longer sentence. And of course, it has all sorts of implications for uh, guys who hang out in in cell, you know, chat rooms, guys who talk about their frustrations with women, it also, of course, has huge implications for everybody in the red pill men's movement because you can be damn sure that not only is this going to uh, reach out to encompass all guys who complain about their difficulty getting laid. Uh, this is going to encompass men who, you know, are involved in the pickup movement um, or pickup artists, men who are a MGTOW, men who are involved in men's issues activism. Uh, this has all sorts of implications for men who want to get together and talk with one another from a non-feminist or anti-feminist perspective. So uh, we'll get to that. In a, in a little bit, but uh, let's start with labor of love and the interesting phenomenon of all of these men lining up to jump through hoops. Apparently there's even something uh, that, that they get hooked up to some sort of machine that simulates the uh, agony of childbirth. I don't know why that's necessary for them. They're gonna have to have their sperm tested uh, they're going to have to do all sorts of things to prove to this 41-year-old woman that they're the person who should father her child. So, yeah, let's talk about it. Well, <laughs> I gotta say, <laughs> I, I find this almost a certain level of embarrassment in this uh, that I'm publicly talking about having watched one of these things. Uh, <laughs> To begin with, uh, not exactly my normal television fare. Sure, Paul. 
Yeah, yeah. I know. I knew. I knew I was going to get that too. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I was reading the article about it today and noticed they said it was on Fox. So I did a search. Sure enough, the the first episode was available. Damn. Uh, the first thing I was struck by in this, honestly, was how close to real life it is. Now we know in 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 standard terms that reality shows have very little to do with reality they're scripted for the most part uh, uh, they're orchestrated well in advance and what have you but in this particular one i thought here were there were 15 guys ready to cut each other's throats for a chance to spread their seed to an attractive woman and i thought okay so this is normal life uh this is what this is this is what men do and it's uh part of their downfall part of their stupidity and that became reinforced the more i watched uh, the first thing they had the guys do they brought them into a nice little um outdoor uh bar uh with refreshments and everything and and gave them drinks and then introduced them to this woman oh by the way this show is in part hosted by Kristen, and I can't remember her last name, one of the stars of Sex in the City, about a, a, a 10 year running television show featuring and glorifying the narcissism and failed relationships of American women. Uh, I thought, how fitting is that to have somebody from Sex in the City hosting this thing? And so she introduces them all together, and then they almost immediately hand all the guys cups and say now you got to go jerk off in the trailer and, and give a sperm sample and <laughs> they get their test results back from their sperm counts which ranged anywhere from uh, they were very very specific about this from 107 million uh, uh, little swimmers in there in the sample to one guy that had 317 million swimmers Ooh. in his sperm and they gave him a trophy <laughs> and he stood there proudly amongst his peers with all of them looking up at him in adulation uh, for his high sperm count and no it was clear nobody found any of this demeaning hmm. well it was wow. part of the competition oh absolutely and the, the competition in the beginning was good natured, but it certainly came out. The guys are starting to sabotage each other, uh, betray their values. Um, I found the whole thing to be really interesting. I'm going to be honest with you, not because I have, you know, any romantic notions about, oh, how wonderful this woman has 15 uh, guys ranging from an anesthesiologist to a professional wrestler, all of them well-off men, all of them very good-looking, fit men, and all competing for her, and she's going to have a baby out of this. How sweet is that? No, <laughs> that's not what I'm thinking. What I'm thinking, honestly, and I'm reminded of just how pathetic that men can be when it comes oh. to it. absolutely and completely pathetic. Yeah, guys that are have eight years of college that went through medical residencies that went through all kinds of abuse to get to where they were. There's CEOs on that team or alleged mm -hmm. CEOs, and they're all groveling idiots that are clamoring for so much as a, as a wink or a nod or a slight hug from this woman or any kind of note of, of approval, and of course part of the theme of the show is that she rejects them all one by one and they're right. all sent off on the ride of shame because right. they they couldn't cut it it's sort of like being kicked off the island on survivor um yes and so those were my first impressions and i i'm not going to continue to watch this but i was just reminded of why i work so hard <laughs> to try to reach men with a different idea about self-perception, about who they are yes, yes. and their place in the world. Exactly. Because this show is living proof that that's direly needed. Man, this show to me is Blue Pill Olympics. Hmm. You know, it's like, this is the blue pill on right steroids. It. It's just, it's what it is. I mean, men are competing like crazy 
and will do anything in order to win. And the prize is a woman, you know, which is, oh God. And for me, the best summary of this damn show was in the comments to the article. And I read the comments and one of the articles read this, 15 simps compete for scraps. Wow, new level of cringe. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, there you go. You know, that's, that says it all. But really, Paul, you're so right. Is This thing is like just another way to look at reality. You know, the reality is this is what happens, that men are put into this hierarchy, whether they like it or not. And the red pill is starting to say, wait a minute, do I want to be a part of that hierarchy? You know, do I want to be in that in the same way as these guys do? And I think most red pill men are saying, no, I don't think so. Not in that way at all. Hmm. I think it's also very interesting that the the the, the prize on the show, let's call oh. her what she is, the trophy. She's the prize on the show. She's what they get awarded. The winner gets awarded this piece right. of property. Yeah. She's 41 years old. Yeah. Um, she's up against her biological clock. And in if you read in the PA, PUA, MGTOW community, you would see, and quite accurately so, this was a woman who's ridden the cock carousel for about 20 years uh, and has finally decided to hop off. She was uh -oh. married once for six months and it, it didn't quite last. Yeah. Yeah, and I think you're right, Paul. She's been on that carousel for a while. And, you know, suddenly now she's saying, um, wait a minute, I'm desperate. I need to have a baby. And her response to that is to have a contest. People, men can compete so I can have what I want, what I'm desperate for. Men can compete to give me that. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and it, it's, it's not like, I mean, they did talk some in the show about fatherhood. And one of the things they're apparently going to put the men through is, like Jana said, the, the devices that simulate labor. However, other than punching guys in the stomach, I don't know how you simulate labor uh, on, on a person. Uh, but also taking them through diaper changing and, and things like that, which is, I mean, if this is how you would actually pick a father, um, I, there's something mentally wrong with you. Uh, but yes, but what what strikes me is this: is this is not about creating a family. This is about giving a 41 year old woman that's a couple of years past hitting the wall the baby that she didn't have when mm -hmm. she wasn't able to. Uh, to bring herself into a fully stable relationship right. in, in her younger years. Yes. That's what this whole thing is about. And of course, we've got fit, at least 15. Can you imagine how many thousands of men tried out mm -hmm. uh, uh, to, to be one of these? 15? Love to know. Yeah, uh, love to know. I bet they were lined up as far as the eye could see. Absolutely. For, yeah. for, for just a shot at this has been of a woman. Yeah. Paul, I wanted to ask you, I, I actually, for some reason, my internet connection went out there. So I lost the last part of what you were saying there. Um, so if I'm repeating, uh, forgive me, but was there any discussion in the first episode of, of like, what is the agreement going to be? What, what did these guys get out of it? Is it purely that they get to pass on their genes uh, or are, are they going to be guaranteed that they get to father this child? Because... Absolutely no mention of anything of the sort like yeah. that. Not even a mention of marriage or what the relationship would look like afterward. Uh. No mention of the level of involvement that the male would have in the life of, of the child. Mm -hmm. Now, all the men were talking about, you know, I want to be a father and, and what have you, but none of that was spelled out. Mm. What's been wow. spelled out in this is... Here's a woman who wants a baby. Yeah, she and, wants a baby. And I'm sure she also wants somebody who has the wherewithal, in other words, the six-figure salary to support bet. her and her child for the next 20 years. So, I mean, that's really, that is major blue pill. If these guys are lining up and, and competing to, to pay out for the next 20 years 
for a child, they don't even have a guarantee that they're going to get to see on a regular basis or be really deeply and intimately involved with. That's sad. What she kicked two guys off at first, it lost two of the contestants because they didn't prove themselves. And one of the first ones was the guy that she said she was most sexually attracted to of all 15, but he was just a medical technician. Ooh. So, so it, it's that blatant. So you got to go. Wow. Wow. Well, she didn't say it in those words, but that was mm -hmm. definitely implied. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. Well, there and you go. She so. did say in the beginning episode, uh, a doctor would be nice. That, of course, those sort of things. Yeah, I don't think she's there to get knocked up by the pool boy. That, mm -hmm. I don't think that's part of the plan. So there <laughs> is at least the implied involvement of the father's wallet after yeah. the deed is done. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's just amazing to me. Uh, really, that that that's something. Because that was the first thing I thought of. What guarantee are these guys going to have, and are they going to ask for that? That this is going to be meaningful for them. That they're not just supplying their seed and their financial support right. for a child that isn't even going to be theirs. I mean, this could be a a whole bunch of heartache for the guy that ends up being picked. And it seems like that's I would pick this woman to mother his child. Well, she's going to be in her 60s. I mean, this yeah. is a disaster in all sorts of ways. And I think it's really interesting that that doesn't even get talked about. This woman is too old to have a child. She's right. going to be 42 by the time she has this child, if she can have the child. I mean, I thought it was rich that they have to have their sperm tested. There's probably no problem with their sperm if they're in their 40s or whatever. A, a woman at 41, her eggs are old. She's having a high risk pregnancy. She has a much greater chance of having a child with chromosomal irregularities and serious problems as a result. I mean, it's also rich that they had to, you know, they're, they're going to have to hook themselves up to a machine that simulates childbirth. I bet she won't even if she does get pregnant, won't even have the child in that way. She'll probably have to have a C-section. I mean, there's just so many problems this, you know, after 35. And, and even if she does manage to have a healthy child, and I think there was some discussion in the article I read about the fact that she also has some eggs that she's had frozen. I don't right. know at what point right. in the past, but um, if she does manage to have a healthy child, how is she going to parent this child? She's going to be elderly by the time the child is going through college. You know, you could make the argument, this is one of the most selfish things a woman can decide to do is to have a child this late in life. Bad for the child physiologically and bad for the child emotionally because she's going to have a lot of trouble parenting this child properly. And, and especially without a father around, well, which yeah, would probably be the case, mm -hmm, which may well be the case. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the fact, the chance of them, you know, be living together as co-parents, raising this child together, are very, very small. And so, you know what she'll do? I mean, she'll have another reality show to pick the three or four people who can parent the kid. You know, it could well be. Could I'm well teasing. be. Oh. Really interesting. One of the contestants, uh, one of the younger, I, he was in his 30s, I think, said that he had spent the last year co-parenting the child of a friend. Hmm. That he had a, knew a single mother. And he stepped in for the past year to play daddy, but now he's done with that. Wow. <laughs> oh, God. Yes, yeah, the child done with that? They, apparently, uh, where do they get these people? And, and again, you really have to think, if I'm a guy, it, let's say I'm a guy in my 40s, which I haven't been for a while, but pretend with me I'm in my 40s and I, I want to get married or I want to, to, to pair bond with a woman and start a family. The idea of, I think I'll find the most desperate woman, woman so desperate that they'll put a lot of on TV and compete with 14 other guys to see which one of us becomes the dad. What kind of moron 
starting a family like that. <laughs> really? It, it is absolutely mm -hmm. unconscionable. I agree. Um, yeah. Uh, so this is yeah it's really funny on the surface and watching these guys make idiots of themselves is entertaining and and it's even entertaining a little bit to watch this narcissistic female soak up all this she's got 14 15 guys just uh bowing and scraping and she's mm -hmm. soaking that up yeah. uh, you can you can tell but there is a serious side to this and I really hope there isn't a family that started out of this. Yeah. Because that kid will be fucked. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting that they really do not mention family. And I think that family is a bad word in our culture today. Sure it you know, is. It's like well, there's something wrong with that. You can start one on a TV show. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. Yeah. Precisely. Yeah. And, and the whole idea that somebody might say to this woman, you know, maybe this is a really bad idea. Like what makes you think <laughs> that this is, is what you're owed, you know, that, that you can just decide now at this stage in your life, now I'm finally ready to have the child that I didn't have when I should have had the child. <laughs> and, and now I really want one. And yeah. you know, there are a lot of women out there who get to this stage, late thirties, oh. 40, and, uh, you know, judging from what they say, they have a very, very powerful desire to have a child. I've read, you know, our essays that these women have written talking about how they felt physical pain when they would see a, a mother with a child. That was how deep their longing was. And so yes. our society has, has turned itself inside out to accommodate this desire, which is maybe not a very good idea, actually, because there's all sorts of reasons why it may actually be oh, a very those bad women thing. Want, those women want babies the same way I want a Corvette. Uh, <laughs> it, it's just- That's biological? Just an idea. Well, I think for men it is. Uh, <laughs> the Corvette. But it's, it's really just an idea of almost a fab, something I want really badly, and then so so many times you see the parenting down the road once the novelty of having that baby is worn off and it's lacking mm -hmm. yeah, i've seen that a thousand times the, this older yeah. woman is totally exhausted and suddenly it doesn't seem like such a great idea anymore and yeah. and it does you know it just speaks to the uh, gynocentrism of our culture obviously that nobody does say that nobody says to women tough doesn't matter how much you want it. Doesn't matter if your heart aches every time you see a baby in a pram. You're too old. It's too late, lady. Tough. You, you know, made that, a choice. And, and, and I'm not, you know, I'm not advocating that. I think that would be actually quite cruel. I think we should have uh, serious and sincere conversations about the wisdom of women going through, you know, having various miscarriages. I mean, the chance of a miscarriage goes up hugely once you're past age 35. Yeah. Uh, you know, there are all sorts of reasons why this is not a good idea. I think we should have those conversations for sure. I don't, I think it would be cruel to say to women, tough, you know, you made your choice, now it's too late. But I think it is interesting that we bend over backwards. Uh, you know, this woman can announce publicly that she thinks this show is going to be really interesting for lots of women who are in a similar situation who find themselves at age 41 without a partner and wanting a child and you know, isn't this a wonderful thing and of course everyone's going to be supportive nobody is going to mock her nobody is going to say you're a failure as a woman because you put off having a child and now you know you don't deserve one because you're old and no man should want to father a child with a 41 year old woman with old eggs. And yet to link to the next <laughs> issue that, that uh, we decided to talk about, that's exactly what we say to men who find themselves without a love interest or who find Bingo. themselves unable to find a woman who will have sex with them or who will love them or whatever it happens to be. You know, without a love interest or without an interest in love. Right. Absolutely. Either, Either yeah. way. Both and, you know, groups are demonized. Yeah. And incel has become the go-to term that primarily women now throw at any man they don't like, 
any man who questions feminist orthodoxy, any man who doesn't seem to be kowtowing to the gynocentric culture that it is mandatory, all men must pay obeisance to, now you're an incel, whether you actually are or not. And if you actually are, and you are, feel that bitterness and that loneliness and that need and that sense of being you know, completely disposable in your culture, you are mocked in the most vicious and now you know, considered a terrorist on top of all of that. You know, the, the difference, and I would say that though in some ways those things are, are uh, equivalent, that a woman's longing to have a child may be, well be equivalent to a man's longing for sexual fulfillment and, a, and a, a sexual partner. And we would never publicly mock and vilify in a widespread way the sadness and perhaps bitterness and anger of a woman unable to conceive a child. We just never would. And we do it regularly with guys who can't get laid. Yep. It's amazing to me. And now we're going to call them terrorists. Now yep. we're going to say when they get together in chat forums and express some of their loneliness or frustration or indeed bitterness and resentfulness and anger, that they can't do that, that somehow they're, you know, they're, they're potential criminals, potential mass murderers. It's amazing. And this, of course, has been in preparation for years. I've seen academics talking about it. I've seen feminists writing articles about it, saying that, you know, incel is an ideological movement. It's all about misogyny, you know, that it is really a, a, a violent, terroristic ideology, which is, of course, nonsense. Yeah, some, some few do of these guys do snap and become violent. The vast majority, of course, do not. Right. And you know, to call them terrorists is just ridiculous. They have no yep. political aims. What, what are their no, political don't. aims? They're, they're, they're not terrorizing society, the few who do go that route. I mean, they are deliberately trying to inflict fear, I would say. They're trying to have an impact. They don't have a political end. I mean, it's ridiculous to call this terrorism. It's just another step in the demonization of any man that women decide they hate, and it's gonna allow them to tar with a broad brush all men who reject feminism and who don't fall in line in our gynocentric culture. Yes. A lot of this started back with Elliot Roger. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember right. exactly when that happened. It's been several years now. Yeah. 2014, but maybe? Yeah, the, the Daily Cost came out uh, with an article on Elliot Roger painting him as an MRA. This was before the term incel was even a thing. Yeah. They didn't have that to point to at the time, but they knew they wanted to point this kind of violence that had some sexual, and Elliot Rogers stuff did have some sexual undertones of uh, to what he was doing, but they didn't have any, they didn't have incels to point at the time. So they called him an MRA. And so right. that he, and of course we'd never heard of him and we did the research. He belonged to a group called PUA Hate, uh, which was basically an anti-PUA group. And he, he was more or less in the incel category. He was one crazed, killer, insane guy with tons of problems. I have no doubt that he was rejected by women right and left. He was a total weirdo. You could see that in uh, the videos that he, he put online before he went on his killing spree. Uh, but <clears throat> there's maybe been, including him, maybe two or three incidents ever from guys who could be loosely affiliated with incels online. That isn't a movement of terrorism. Uh, that is just some sick individuals. I mean, I mean, I hate to even say something so obvious, but the guy who shot up the softball game a few years back and shot up the Republicans uh, playing softball in Washington, D.C. was a Democrat. We don't paint all Democrats as terrorists. Right. Um, might paint them, some of them as idiots, but not as, <laughs> not as terrorists. But this is all they're doing. This is a manufactured narrative from yes. guys who are already 
marginalized, already disenfranchised on the edges of society. And this is done to compound things and make them worse on those guys. Why? Because they can't defend themselves. It's the same, same crap as all men are violent. Yep. You know, it's like trying to lump all men into this category of being violent. Just like we don't lump, you know, most child abuse is done by women, but we don't think of women as, quote, child abusers. You know, but somehow they get away with this every time, and our incels doing the same freaking thing. You know, it stood out to me that one of the articles, they had a section where they're trying to say why he was a terrorist, right? And they had this video of one of these guys, not this guy, but a guy before him, uh, describing his whole thing as an incel. And it was fascinating to listen to because the guy was interviewing him in a, in a fairly nice way. And the guy was saying, well, what happened? And the guy very calmly described the situation where he walked into this room where there are a number of women with these you know, large football player type guys. And he made some sort of comment and all the women laughed at him. And he said, it was just so degrading. And, and he was just, and the guy kind of, he said, yeah, I can really understand that. I could too. I can understand that, how it would just hurt like hell, man, to be laughed at by all those people. And yet now we've taken this guy who's been laughed at repeatedly. It reminds me of the Joker movie, actually. Guy who's laughed at repeatedly and turned him into a criminal. Yeah. You know? Oh, well. Crazy, crazy. Yeah, if you, if you actually... Don't long enough, it'll come out biting. Exactly. I mean, yeah. if you, if, if, if you are actually concerned about the potential for this group of men to become violent, what would be the first thing that you might logically think about doing and discussing? Well, figuring out ways that those men can, can be helped. Because anybody who studies them at all, I mean, I'm not saying I'm an expert, but you know, anybody who's ever talked to an incel or, I mean, there's incels, self-declared incels who, who speak online about their experiences. These are guys that they have pretty recognizable needs, as, as you said, Tom. Yes. Pretty easy to relate to what they're going through. Yeah. They, they are longing to feel part of something. They don't yes. want to feel like everybody hates them and everybody mocks them and exactly. you know, they don't want to live their lives feeling the contempt of women and thinking that the, what their future is is just nothingness barrenness being hated being avoided people turning their backs to them and never having a woman in their life i mean it's pretty obvious and instead of trying to figure out ways that m these men's lives can have meaning that they you know that, that they can turn their lives around, that they can feel in some way that their lives matter, that they have a purpose, so they don't have to go out with a bang thinking this is the only way I can make my mark on soci society. Instead of figuring that out, they just think, oh, great, yeah, now we're gonna, we're gonna label them terrorism and we're gonna go after them. We're gonna get the police to hunt them down. We're gonna shut down, you know, if they have chat rooms or they have forums or whatever, we're gonna label all that in some way criminal yes. so we're going to make them go underground even further we're going to make them feel that they're even more hated exactly yes. you know and and i hate the way you know that in in one of the articles it it gives a definition from a canadian government website on you know i think it's the status of women and gender equality or one of those <laughs> government <laughs> websites and it says that these are men who, and you know, this is so classic. These are a subgroup of men who believe women owe them sex. Oh. You know, give me a break. That That is not what is animating them. You know, and this is the thing. I mean, feminists have been saying this now for years. There was a ridiculous University of Calgary professor a couple of years ago where they tried to do a showing of the red pill at the University of Calgary and the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation got this woman, her name I think was Rebecca Sullivan. She was a, a feminist professor oh, of, yes. I don't know what, sociology or yes. film studies or you know some non-discipline <laughs> discipline. They got her on and, and said, you know, what is the red pill about? It turned <laughs> out this woman, woman hadn't even seen the film. Exactly. Yeah, but you know, she said, <laughs> It was really scary 
And I think we need to name it as scary that somebody wanted to show the film at the University of Calgary. And so the, the interviewer was asking her, well, what is this? What is the red pill? What does it mean? And she, and says, she didn't even know what the metaphor meant. She no, she didn't. Exactly she had no, wrong, yeah, yeah, she had no opposite. idea. Yeah, the exact opposite. But the only thing she came up with, with she thought uh, red pill was just men's rights activists, but she, she got M MRAs all mixed up with, with pickup artists. And I don't think, as you say, uh, Paul, incel even existed at that time, at least not as a widespread term, but you know, she would have lumped them all together as one. And it was men whose message was, we wouldn't have to rape you you know, to their, their message to women, we wouldn't have to rape you if we could have sex with whomever we wanted, whenever we want. And that was allowed to stand as a as an academics, uh, you know, well reasoned assessment right. of the men's rights movement. You know, and yeah. that, so that's the level of knowledge that we're talking about that these academics bring. These are the people who are informing the RCMP and the Canadian, you know, security and intelligence services. And, you know, and, and this notion that these are just men who feel entitled to have sex and they need to be shut down. They, they need to be told that women don't owe you anything as if that's going to somehow help. It's just, it's really scary. And, and this is all Crazy. about further controlling men further making it clear to men you're not even allowed to get involved with a group and you know bitch about the fact that you have trouble finding a date even that is now considered borderline critical yes. and criminal more nefarious than that i think what a lot of this boils down to if you really look at it it boils down to Feminists finding a way to turn the state against men that they sexually reject. Yes. yes. If, they, exactly. if, if these men don't meet the bar for sexual acceptance, then we're going to list them as dangerous. Yes. We're going to put as much distance between us and them as we can. And that will leave us a much better selection of men for sexual uh, purposes than we would, we would have otherwise. This is, women turning the state against men who they don't want to sleep with. Yeah. And we can claim victimhood, you yeah. know, at the same time. Yeah. What, a, yeah. what a deal. What a deal. Of course. You know, I think it's just, to me, it's just so stark, the difference in how we criminalize, demonize, pathologize these incels, guys who desperately want to have sex, right? But on the other hand, we take a woman who desperately wants to have sex and we make her wonderful, something mm -hmm. someone should should meet her needs immediately. Yeah. The contrast is just amazing. It's just amazing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I was thinking that in relation to this woman at the in labor of love. Now, of course, she is a beautiful woman. I have, you know, I thought she was gorgeous. Uh, even if she's 41 and her eggs are all oh, she's uh, hot. She's very beautiful. <laughs> um, and it, and if she were ugly, you know, if she were yeah, hugely work. fat and she had you know, really bad skin and everything else. Well, it, the men would not be lining up. Right, you know, right. it's true. You know, she she would That's not correct. be. Well, at least not those same. men. Not those men. That's a very good point. Yeah, <laughs> the, the 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 chances that she would not be able to find any man who would be willing to impregnate her probably pretty low. But yes. certainly, she wouldn't be the star of a reality TV show. But even so, and yes, and some men might say she's a dog and they might make, you know, derogatory comments about her. But in, in terms of society as a whole, there is no way she would be hated, even right. if she ended up going kind of weird, you know, like, let's say she yes. couldn't have a child. And that was the thing she most wanted. And she ended up becoming violent as a result. And she killed somebody. Poor thing. Yes, exactly. Why couldn't she be helped? How, why was she driven? to do this and it would never be, you know there would never be a movement on the part of men lobbying CSIS and saying that women who kill 
out of a you know a inability to bear children or because nobody would have a family with her that they should be labeled terrorists it just right. wouldn't happen right but of course you know as soon as you have men that women reject sexually it's perfectly okay to hate them and to categorize them as dangerous even though as you say paul the number of men who have actually killed out of their incel ideology if we're going to call it call it that it's not really an ideology but whatever it you know it's tiny it's a handful yeah. of men although if they keep going you know i mean they're 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 you know if if you wanted to make killers out of frustration this is how you would do it guys that's this is it. how you do it and, that's, and it. that's exactly what they're doing yep. so it's and of course it is going to spread it, because they can't keep mras separate from incels they think they're all one group same thing same with migtau I mean, MGTOW yep. don't want to have anything to do with women. So so they're the opposite of incels. Well, they're just yet, mad because they can't get laid. Yeah, they're just <laughs> mad because they can't. So they'll be lumped in too. This is, this is the first step very clearly in criminalizing all red pill descent from feminist gynocentrism. Yes. Agree. Yeah. Definitely agree. Scary stuff. Really scary stuff. There's two interesting and I think interrelated stories. I mean, some of the same uh, just sort of uh, behaviors that we have in human beings around sex and sexuality and reproduction um, put us into some very bizarre circumstances. I mean, uh, both of these stories, the first one is just a crazy making, absolutely crazy story that totally reflects human nature in its truest form. And it makes me <laughs> makes me not so hopeful about our species. <laughs> uh, but true. And and the, the same thing with, all right, these are incels that by by their very definition, their definition, they can't get laid. They're guys that are not attractive to women. So of course we must attack them and demonize them and marginalize them. Yeah. Uh, as though there's some sort of threat. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you will see that play out. I guarantee you on this series, The Labor of Love, you're going to watch those guys as, they, as you go down the line, backstabbing each other more, being more and more obsequious in order to gain this woman's approval her. And, yeah. and attention. And it'll be more of the same. It's just human reproductive biology is just what we do and you're gonna watch it all right paul <laughs> hell no <laughs> i am not watching another episode I, I did it once so that you guys didn't have to sure <laughs> 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 oh but god pass on watching it uh, there's plenty of garbage on tv i I, I can find some better garbage than that probably so Listen. So are we about finished? Well, I guess we're, we're about finished. Well, except... one thing I I want to mention <laughs> Clementine Ford. Oh yes. To today for she backtracked on a tweet she made that said the coronavirus just wasn't killing men fast enough. Um, and for the first time that I can ever remember, she actually apologized uh, for saying that. Well. Turns out there was some publishing advance money at stake. Mm -hmm. They had to lose about 20 grand if, if they pulled that. So she suddenly, so she wrote this five, six paragraph, totally bullshit, non-apology, but it passed enough so that she could get her, her money. Um, so just as an honorary mention today, I think Janice came up with the term super puta. Mm -hmm. uh, she gets it. Definitely. She gets the super puta for the, for the day and for all time, for posterity. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Yeah. For our non-darling Clementine. <laughs> <laughs> oh what, a, yeah. what a piece of work mm -hmm. that woman she, is. She really is. She's amazing. Oh. Yeah. We'll have to have her on sometime. Oh, yeah, I'm <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'm sure she would, yeah. <laughs> I know I would like it. <laughs> boy i can imagine mm -hmm. well i guess that's it for now that's it yeah all right you all take care we, and what we want to remember is oh. that men are, are
good. <laughs> yes, they are. Yeah, we hold men in high regard. Indeed, we do. You all take care. You guys take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Have a great week. Thank you.